Welcome to Kermit Uncut, where we're counting down the best and worst films of 2016. We've already done the top 10 best films of the year, and we've counted down numbers 10 to 6 of my worst films of the year. So just to recap in my list so far, joint 10th place, Batman vs Superman, Dawn of Justice and Suicide Squad. At number 9, Ben-Hur in 3D. At number 8, Criminal. Number 7, Inferno. And number 6, Fifty Shades of Black. Now, here comes 5 to 1. And at number five, it's Gerard Butler in London Has Fallen. What's wrong? Nothing. Bugs the hell out of me. You know, in an alternative imagined universe, Britain voted to stay in Europe, Donald Trump lost the election, and Hollywood gave us a sequel to White House Down. In the real world, Brexit means Brexit, we've all been trumped, and Hollywood gave us a sequel to Olympus Has Fallen. I like fantasy. Rooftop, three o'clock! Brace round back. On to number four in my rundown of the worst films of the year. And at number four, Alex Proyas' Gods of Egypt. Now, you'll remember that there was a huge spat between Alex Proyas and critics in general, and me in particular, I think. Alex Proyas said that the critics who were giving his film a hard time were diseased vultures pecking at a dying carcass, which, as I said, kind of means that he thinks his film is a dying carcass. And on that front, Alex, we are in complete agreement. The terrible thing about this is, Alex Preuss has made some interesting films in the past. Gods of Egypt's terrible. The thing is, Alex, you know it's terrible. We all know it's terrible. Let's just move on. We should run. Run? We mortals do it all the time. Which brings us to number three, and a film which many of you may not have seen because it barely saw the inside of a cinema. I'm talking, of course, about Rob Zombie's 31. Now, you may think you see a grease-painted performer sitting before you, but trust me. I'm not here to brighten your dismal day. Now, it's a matter of record that I am no fan of Rob Zombie. I think The Devil's Rejects is one of the worst films I have ever seen. But 31 is pretty stretching stuff. It is the story of a group of carnival workers who are forced to take part in a deadly game in which they go up against psychos with names like Deathhead, Psychohead and Sexhead. No, really. Now, I would have just ignored the film. I would have just let it pass under the radar. Just, you know, forget about it. Leave it be. You know, it's, walk away. It's not worth it. The problem is, it's got Malcolm McDowell in it. And I love Malcolm McDowell. I'm a huge defender of Malcolm McDowell. I'm the person who thought Ivalenko was quite an interesting film. I'm the person who demanded that Channel 4 showed a recut version of Caligula. I'm the person who stands by Malcolm McDowell. Not now. 31 is war. War is hell. On to number two, and my second least favourite film of 2016 is a festive offering. It's Bad Santa 2. You remember Bad Santa? You remember how much you liked it? Terry Zwiegoff directed it. It was interesting. Billy Bob Thornton was kind of funny. You remember that? You remember how it was sort of scabrous and vulgar, but in an interesting and perhaps sensitive and oddly touching way? You remember how it was like an antidote? to all that sort of glut of sugary stuff that you get at Christmas. Remember how it grew in stature over the years? You remember you'd see it on television, it was better than you remembered? You remember how you'd have conversations with people in the pub? You'd say, oh, actually, Bad Santa's really funny. Forget all that. This time, they just want your money. It's go time. Which brings us to number one and my least favourite film of 2016. And it will come as no surprise at all to learn that the film which I thought was the stinker of the year halfway through the year, when we did the midterm report in July, has remained unsurpassable in terms of yearly turkeys. As December rolls by, nothing has been as bad as Dirty Grandpa. Hey, wait, wait. We're not going to Daytona. Grandma's funeral was yesterday. She told me on her deathbed, you get back out there again. Oh, so that's what this is all about. You wanted me to drive you down to Boca so I could be your wingman. I haven't had sex in 15 years and I want to You know, one of the weird things about Dirty Grandpa is that although I saw it several months ago, I'm still every bit as angry about it now as I was when it first came out. I mean, partly it's because of Zac Efron. I love Zac Efron and whenever he lets me down, a little piece of me dies, but it's more to do with Robert De Niro. So I'm a big Robert De Niro fan, and as you probably know, in the news, in the second half of the year during the presidential election, there was a video that went viral of Robert De Niro talking about Donald Trump. 
and he was angry, and he was alarmed, and he was outraged. And in fact, at one point in the video, he talked about wanting to punch Donald Trump. I mean, it was a mesmerizing performance, really quite chilling, but funnier than Dirty Grandpa. Party till you're pregnant! Yeah! Yeah! You can't catch me! Oh, 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 oh. Dirty Grandpa is one of those films that makes you think, I genuinely don't understand the world. You know, of all the things that have happened in 2016, there are many which I thought were completely impossible, I thought were completely unpredictable, that I thought were genuinely unthinkable. The worst of all of them is Dirty Grandpa. I can just about get my head around everything else that happened this year, but that film, nah. This is crack. I just smoke crack? Yeah, but just like a lot. I just smoke crack! Yeah! So there we are, my list of the top 10 worst films released in the UK in 2016. To recap, at number 10, joint 10th place, Batman vs Superman and Suicide Squad. At number 9, Ben-Hur 3D. At number 8, Criminal. Number 7, Inferno. Number 6, Fifty Shades of Black. At 5, London Has Fallen. 4, Gods of Egypt. 3, 31. At number 2, Bad Santa 2 and straight in at number one, Dirty Grandpa, a film which made the rest of the year look quite acceptable. I'm gonna throw up. So there we are, my best and worst films of 2016. What did I miss? What were your favorites? What were your least favorites? What were the things you really loved? What were the things you really hated? Let me know. And incidentally, Happy New Year. 2017 can only get better.